Monarchy A monarchy is a type of government ruled by a monarch, which is often a king or a queen. The monarch's role is passed down through the same family, from generation to generation, often going to the oldest child. Major countries operating under a monarchy include the United Kingdom, Japan, Spain, Sweden, and Saudi Arabia. There are multiple forms of monarchies, for example, symbolic monarchy, where the monarch has no political or economic power, like the United Kingdom. Instead, the country is run by a parliamentary government, led by a prime minister. On the other hand, an absolute monarchy is where the king or queen has the power to make all the important decisions in a country. The disadvantage of a monarchy is that it can lead to unsuitable leaders who came to power because they were the heirs. This often leads to a lack of democratic governance and the potential for abuse of power. Socialism Socialism is a form of government wherein the workers or laborers are allowed to own property, but the distribution of goods and services is controlled by a central government. The government's goal is to distribute all of the goods and services equally to ensure everyone in the country has the same opportunities as everyone else. Some of the more common examples of socialist states are the People's Republic of China and the Republic of Cuba. While most socialist states call themselves republics, they usually follow the fundamentals of socialism, where labor and property are equitably distributed and there are no social classes or hierarchies. The reason why socialism is not as popular as some forms of government is the lack of incentives. If someone gets the same resources as someone who didn't work as hard, there's no point in working harder. This can potentially lead to the nation's failure, especially if no one is willing to work hard to get better incentives. Democracy a democracy is when a country believes that the citizens are the supreme rulers of the nation. Democracy is as old as human civilization itself, but first appeared in the ancient political and philosophical teachings of the people of Athens. In a democracy, the people are the ones who determine the leaders and the laws of the land through a majority vote. It also provides an environment wherein fundamental human rights are respected and the people are allowed to exercise their free will. Some of the most democratic countries in the world include Norway, Sweden, and New Zealand. However, the problem in a democratic country is that it can be too unstable due to constant leadership changes. Autocracy An autocracy is when only one person or ruling party holds supreme power over an entire nation. Every decision that the autocratic ruler makes cannot be limited by external factors. These decisions are absolute and should be followed by the country. The autocrat also has total control over what the people can do when it comes to their civil liberties. In an autocracy, the people have no say in the nation's affairs, contrasting it to democracy. Autocracies have existed since ancient times, usually in absolute monarchies, where the king's word is the law. The Soviet Union, once ruled by Joseph Stalin, is one of the more recent examples of an autocracy. The biggest disadvantage of an autocracy is the potential abuse of power by the autocrat, who may become a dictator. Federal Federal governments formally divide the sovereign power between a central government and the regions that form part of the country. The central government is still the leader of the whole nation, but allows the different regions or states to have control over their internal affairs. These states can have their leaders and laws, but are not independent nations. The reason why federalism wants to decentralize some of the functions of the government is to promote efficiency. This is usually the case for bigger countries, because it's easier for smaller territories to govern themselves than allowing a central government to govern an entire nation. It's similar to how the head coach of a sports team needs to delegate roles to his assistant coaches. The assistant coaches have a sense of independence in their roles, but they are still under the overall leadership of the head coach. The most common example of a federal government is the United States of America, which is under the leadership of a president but has different state senators that manage their territories and constituents. One of the biggest drawbacks of a federal form of government is the possible economic inequality between different regions because some territories have better access to certain resources that other territories can't have access to. Oligarchy Oligarchy, which can be translated to rule of the few, is a form of government wherein only a few oligarchs have power over the entire nation. These oligarchs come from different groups or families that usually rise to power through financial or military means. 
The country's political, social, and economic affairs are settled through the decisions made by the oligarchs. Oligarchies, unlike monarchies, don't formally pass their leadership roles to the next generation, but can still stay in power for multiple generations as long as they maintain their financial or military status within the nation. The USA is formally a federal government, but is often seen as an oligarchy by most people because of the influence that large corporations have on the decisions of politicians. Modern-day oligarchies often arise when large firms and businesses become too financially powerful. The worst part about oligarchies is the potential economic and social inequalities between different classes. Only the rich and powerful benefit from decisions made by their fellow oligarchs. Republic. The concept of the Republic results from the ancient Greek philosopher Plato's teachings and has become the foundation of many modern forms of government. In a Republic, the people have the right to the affairs of the country because it is believed that the state belongs to the people and everyone in the state has an equal opportunity to take part in the country's decisions. It is only through the will of the people that the leaders of a country are elected into office. The leaders of a republic are representatives of the people and should be making decisions that favor everyone in the state. There are notable differences between a republic and a democracy. In a republic, the people own the state. On the other hand, in a pure democracy, the people don't own the state but are the sovereign leaders of the nation. A country can be both a republic and a democracy simultaneously. For example, the Philippines is both a republic and a democracy, but not all countries are republics and democracies at the same time. Canada is a democracy, but is constitutionally a monarchy. Republics also have their drawbacks, because not all nations are culturally and socially suited for a republic form of government, especially if corruption and abuses are common among the leaders. Communist a communist government believes in the concept of a classless society and aims to achieve it through the state's absolute control over the country's resources. The ruling party, often led by an authoritarian figure, controls all of the social, political, and economic decision-making in a communist nation. Communist countries believe in Karl Marx's teachings that a capitalist form of government would eventually destroy itself. As a result, the goal of communism is to achieve a classless society through the elimination of private ownership of property so that all goods and services within the state are equally shared by the people. There are currently five countries that practice communism in today's modern world, namely China, Cuba, Laos, North Korea, and Vietnam. One of the reasons why communism often fails is that it is prone to abuses and the restriction of human rights. Anarchism Anarchies are often called non-governance because the key aspect of this form of government is the absence of a central government. The goal of an anarchist system is to not only decentralize the power of the government, but to eliminate the government itself to allow the people to self-govern. The popular belief is that an anarchist government tends to be chaotic. But that's not the case, because one of the most important goals of anarchism is to allow people to volunteer willingly and freely to help one another for the improvement of the community. It is different from socialism or communism because there is no equitable distribution of labor and resources, but there exists an equitable right to self-governance. In most cases, anarchies rise from destroying a previous government just before establishing a new form of government. There is no true anarchist government today, but Somalia was in anarchy before 2006, when it had no national government. The problem with anarchism is that it can lead to chaos when everyone is only looking after their self-interests instead of helping one another. Presidential In a presidential form of government, there is a separation between the different branches of the government, allowing the executive branch to have separate roles from the legislature. The president is the head of the executive branch and is tasked with the execution of the laws. Meanwhile, the legislature is the branch that's responsible for the enactment of the laws. Presidential governments can arise from republics and democracies. Most democratic republics have a presidential form of government. Some of the best examples of presidential governments are South Korea, the Philippines, Nigeria, and Indonesia. A presidential form of government's major downside is that too much executive power in one person can lead to abuse of power. Parliamentary In a parliamentary system of government, the party with the greatest representation in the legislature is nominated to the executive branch. 
The party's leader becomes the prime minister, or the chancellor, who appoints members of the party to the cabinet to have their tasks as members of the executive branch. However, the ruling party does not hold absolute executive powers because the opposing party must challenge the ruling party regularly. The prime minister can also be removed from power at the will of the legislature or the ruling party through a vote of no confidence if the prime minister fails to uphold their duties. Parliamentary systems can also exist alongside different forms of government, such as a monarchy. Japan is a constitutional monarchy with a royal family acting as symbolic leaders but has a parliamentary government led by a prime minister. The problem with a parliamentary form of government is that it fails to provide a stable government because the opposing party will always try to challenge the ruling party, leading to never-ending conflicts. Constitutional A constitutional form of government is when a constitution acts as the foundation of the country's laws and systems. It is the constitution that defines the limits and functions of a government. In most cases, the constitution is enacted to extend the people's will. Constitutional governments come in many forms. For example, the United Kingdom is a constitutional monarchy that defines the limits of the monarch's powers. The United States is also a constitutional government, but is a presidential form of constitutional democracy. However, the major weakness of a constitutional form of government is that every system or law in place has to be consistent with the Constitution. The Constitution has to be amended if vital laws need to be passed but are inconsistent with the Constitution. Totalitarian The term totalitarian was originally coined by Benito Mussolini, who led the fascist state of Italy during his reign from the 1920s to the 1940s. A totalitarian system of government is when the government seeks to control everything within the country. This does not only include the political and economic matters of the country, but also the beliefs and values of the citizens. Theoretically, the freedom of the citizens in a totalitarian regime is suppressed. Totalitarian government abides by the belief that everything within the state should fall under the control of the state, and that no one in the state should ever go against the state. One of the best examples of a totalitarian regime in modern times is North Korea, which follows a totalitarian republic ruled by the Kim family for three generations already. Like socialist, autocratic, and communist governments, a totalitarian regime is prone to human rights suppression and abuses.